the nature of the self is the existence and the awareness of existence. Everything else then is added to it. All the mystical traditions say that. Now, what does science say about the nature of the self? We've heard Hamid, and he did a brilliant job to tell us of the various kinds of the self, the individual self, the <coughs> universal self, the self in the Buddhist tradition, the self in the Shaivite tra tradition, the self in the Advaita Vedantic tradition, in the Sufi tradition, I would add in the Christian tradition. In the case of Christianity, the statement of Christ, I and my Father are one, he really just said, I am that. But he has, as many religions, has mis forgotten perhaps, not, not, let me not say misrepresented, but forgotten the original message. Then we went to other things. But the message is always very simple. And now what does science say about itself? Well, as the previous speaker said, there is the individual self and there is your universal self. I am in love with the universal self. But I'm also in love with the individual self. I'm in love with my wife, Susan. I'm in love with myself. I love you all. It's really love that makes this world go around. I think it was the Beatles who said that or some, somebody. <laughs> it's a long time ago, forgotten. Where is the self? Where is the individual self? Um, indeed, it is, I believe, in every single cell of the body. Every single cell of the body. And if you take that, then it's got to be even below the cell level. Why? Because the cells are made of individual little particles. So here's a question for you. If you like a koan, a koan is, is a question um, in the Zen tradition which is supposed to put a riddle and then makes you think and when you really get it, the koan, you say, aha, or you say, haham, <laughs> you understand. So the riddle there is that, this is a question to you. The atom or an electron in your particular favorite neuron. I don't know which one is your particular favorite neuron. You have about trillions of them, right? But let's say any one of those neurons, the electron in one of those neurons. How is that electron different from the electron in the center of a nuclear power plant? Are they the same or are they different? Let's hear it from the audience. How many of you think they're the same? Don't be bashful, raise your hands. How many, okay. So a third of you or so say, how many of you think it's different? One, <laughs> two, two. And I'd say that the majority of you didn't raise your hands, you're agnostics, you, or you're very careful. You said, I don't know. Well, the answer is, I believe that it's the same. In fact, there is 10 to the 80 electrons in the universe. 10 to the 80 electrons in the observable universe, one followed by 80 zeros. It's a staggering number. Even the politicians in Washington cannot count so many <laughs> dollars, right? They now talk about trillions. Well, trillion is only 10 to 12, one followed by 12 zeros. One followed by 80 zeros is so vast a number, there's really nothing in the universe as large as that number except the number of particles. How can those particles operate in synchrony. How does an electron that is in the center of a neuron know that it's different from an electron that's in the center of a nuclear power plant? Or in the center of the sun, for that matter? They are the same. What keeps them together? I propose to you what keeps them together, together is the great self. It's a self we all are part of. And it is the self that ultimately is the one that needs to be loved and honored and become one with. They say that we love our loved ones for the sake of the self. And we 
feel that love because of the love itself. Now, this is not what scientists actually tell us. <laughs> this is what some of us scientists have reached that conclusion after many years of inquiry, because to be honest with you, nothing else makes sense. I'm making those pronouncements to you not because I'm following some sort of woo-woo science or some sort of wow science or some sort of, you know, new age science, but it is because following rational thinking, which I adore, <laughs> I like mathematics, following the na rational thinking, it is the only one thing that makes sense. So we have an issue in front of us. What is the self? Now science has pushed the limits to the vacuum. So the title of my talk was, I don't have it up there, Fullness and Emptiness. And actually I was talking about the vacuum, but it also applies to the great self. It also applies to the individual self because the individual self is the same as the great self. I and my father are one, aham brahmasi, I am that, thou art that, you are that. So what is the vacuum? Physics tells us the vacuum not only contains 10 to the 80 particles which the observable universe contains, but here is something I would like you to take tonight and contemplate when you go to bed as a quan and think the staggering energies that the universe, the physical universe, forget about the universe beyond the physical universe, contains. Take the tip of your finger, your fingertip. Okay, just do that for me. See how small it is? You know how much energy of vacuum space this cubic centimeter or the tip of your fingertip contains? As much energy as the all hundreds of billions of galaxies with 400 billion stars put together, the tip of your finger in vacuum space contains in potential form, it's potential form, vast amounts of energy. It's amazing, right? Empty space of this size contains at least as much, or if not more, energy as the entire universe of mighty galaxies receding from each other with 400 billion, uh, 400 billion stars each with perhaps a billion or 10 billion humanoids or human beings or individual species who understand themselves. So it seems that consciousness is everywhere. And going back to the riddle that I mentioned before about the electron, the electron being the same or not the same? If you follow our line of thinking, then life does not stop at itself. As they said in the old days, it's turtles all the way down, right? In this case, it's consciousness all the way down, and it's all the way up. Each atom in the universe has got to be conscious. Otherwise, how the whole thing is held together. How can the electrons communicate with each other? How can we communicate with each other if we're not conscious of each other? So it staggers my mind when scientists say, oh, some scientists, not all of them, say, oh, consciousness is an epiphenomenon. It came out because of evolution. It came because of this, because of that. And actually, you know, if you go inside, you don't find it. Yeah, it's true, you don't find consciousness inside, because it's everywhere. <laughs> How can you find it in a particular spot? It's everywhere. 